Welcome to The Complete Musician, creativity at its core, exploring innovative musical ideas, thoughts, and techniques for the modern musician in today's society, with your hosts, James Nagus and Drew Phillips. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to The Complete Musician, episode Ocho. I am one of your hosts, Drew. And I'm James. It's been really, really busy, uh, complete with... A lot of new stuff. Yeah, just so many new responsibilities. I'm so used to bouncing between adjunct jobs that this full-time mess has so much responsibility associated with it. Uh, So uh, that's kind of guiding me to what I wanted to talk about today. Um, And it's something my students are struggling with, and that's balance in their lives between uh, life practice music uh ensembles and all the other junk they've got going on Hmm. that is a struggle yeah i know a lot of my students are dealing with similar things especially i mean i'm sure we'll talk about it but especially like the music ed students that take 10 bazillion credits and still don't have enough time to do anything beyond music yeah and it's it's really tough for them i understand because i know as us being fairly young we remember being students and all the junk that we had to do um so we have this well at least i say fairly young yeah Yeah. (laughs) um (laughs) so we had all this uh stuff to do and so i feel empathy for them um but i feel like i've gone through some things that have really helped me um, and I'm thinking about efficiency and using my time for the most benefit that in certain categories can really help them. So that's kind of what my talk is about today. Um, and I have certain categories of things that they can balance in their lives. Um, so you can, you know, chime in when you feel necessary. Sounds good. Um, so <laughs> the first thing I want to say, excuse me if I cough, I've been a little under. The that is letter. inappropriate. There will be no coughing it's on a- this podcast. Sorry about that. We'll replace it with like a really silly sound effect, like a really <laughs> high pitched, like cuckoo or something. I don't know. Uh, if I happen to sneeze. Anyway, the first thing I want to say is that these opinions are of my own, and this may be controversial, or people may not agree with me. And if not, then that's great. And you can certainly email us at cornmotohorn at gmail dot com and disagree with me, and I welcome your comments. But I just wanted to say I represent the thoughts and. Uh, opinions of drew phillips and that is all if you're going to write an angry email just um say in the subject line angry email to drew good anyway okay so that disclaimer aside uh the first thing i wanted to talk about is practice balance for these kids uh because i think one of the first things that i ask uh one of the first responses i get from my students when they come in and for their lessons and i say you know how was practice this week a fifty percent of the time, and maybe you've experienced this too. I get, uh, I didn't have enough time to practice this week. I say, why? And they go, well, I had so many other things to do, and that may be true. Um, but I think that there are ways that we can find to help alleviate some of these maybe not so smart practice habits that our students may right. have. And devil's advocate, I mean, a lot of the students, especially the younger ones. They've never just never been taught like how to practice or when to practice. And if they're coming right out of high school, you know, their schedules. I if college is busy, sometimes high school is was even crazier for them with extracurriculars and everything. Oh man, and dude, that that's like a whole other <laughs> like whole other can of worms is high school schedule, which today is like, I couldn't survive. It would just be so insane with all the mess they've got to do. Um, I don't even know how I even played my horn. Anyway, (laughs) so uh, I think it's, it's natural and a good assumption to, to say that a music major who is going to be either music education, music performance, whoever, who wants to be good at their instrument should have an average practice per day of about two hours. They should spend about two hours a day with their instrument. And that's split between warming up, technical improvement, and repertoire practice. I don't think that that's unreasonable, in my opinion. Do you include any kind of ensemble rehearsal in that? No, and I'll get to that. Um, But uh, spending that time um, is really important for these kids to get it. And I think that's where they're finding problems in balancing 
um, finding maybe that at least of a minimum of two hours a day um, to spend technically getting better at their instrument. Um, when a student comes in and says, you know, I having I'm having problems finding the time to practice in the day just by myself in a practice room. One of my first responses is, what time do you wake up in the morning? Mm. And of course I get the, if I haven't had my coffee, then I can't do anything. And I'm like, too bad, because (laughs) the morning is the best time to spend with your instrument. Of course, in the opinion of Drew Phillips. Because I, I know in my undergrad, I developed... Uh, this habit that I would wake up, maybe not too early, I mean like maybe 7 o'clock, and go spend just a little bit of time in the beginning of the day uh, with my instrument to just get in not only a warm-up, but some kind of technical practice. It started my day off really well because I was just by myself and I didn't have to deal with people because when I was younger, I was not so much of a morning person. But I spent that time getting better, and it kind of started my whole day off right um, just getting better at the thing that I knew that I was training to be excellent at. Um, it was tough some days, but I fought through it. And now I've gotten to that point where if I don't really start my day with my warm-up, then the whole day just kind of feels off. Yeah. Well, I mean, this is an interesting discussion because my experience was completely different than yours. Yeah. And maybe it's just because I <laughs> had a different schedule or maybe wasn't as good of a student as I should be. But I Ooh. certainly didn't start my day with practicing. Um, and, you know, I definitely acknowledge the importance of a morning warm-up. I think it is a good way to get your head in the game, mm-hmm. to prepare yourself for the day. Um, and one thing to keep in mind, too, I mean, you used to throw out the number of two hours. And yeah, while that's think, debatable, yeah. too, I think that that's a scary number. But you, you don't mean it as in you must sit down from like 5 to 7 p.m. You're thinking a total of two hours. So maybe your morning session's like 30 minutes. Right? That's a great clarification. Absolutely. I only mean like two hours uh, uh, throughout the entire day of, of your time spent alone with the instrument. And maybe even you could think of that as... Um, an average throughout the week. So some days, obviously, you won't have enough or as right. much time. So right. you may only get in 45 minutes, but then maybe right. another day you just spend a little extra time. Right. And so in my only point in saying like doing a morning practice, because uh, on the other side of that, like you said, um, not only did I do morning practices when I was in, you know, undergrad and, and in my master's um, doctorate, I was kind of traveling, so I didn't really have that opportunity all the time. But uh, I also, when I was an undergrad, practiced really late at night, which I would not advocate. Like, I, I practiced really late at night, like mm. until the building closed at midnight. I would not advocate that. Um, so maybe, like you said, an average of trying to get two hours a day is a really important thing. But I'll get into um, in just a minute about like what to do on those days that you can can't do like two hours in a practice room throughout the day doing that. But um, I do find as a, as one of those solutions for trying to uh, find time to practice, I think a lot of students don't take advantage of the morning time because they like to sleep in or have been staying up too late Netflixing kind of thing. Um, Anyway, that's just my, my on practicing like, and, and trying to find times during the day. I think morning is a really untaken advantage um, that, you know, um, that I think students could again, take advantage of. Um, Another thing uh, that I think is hard to balance with students is ensembles um, because students are typically now involved with a ton of ensembles. Like they're in the marching band and like the wind ensemble and in the orchestra and in the pet band and in, you know, a thousand chamber things. Right. It's crazy. I I mean, we double dipped all the way, I think, through our through our degrees. I mean, most of the doctorate even. Yeah, we had to. Um, And so it's students say that it's tough to find time to balance like the time that they have to practice all of their, you know, literature And then they have to practice for ensembles and things. Again, this may be controversial, but in my opinion, um, sometimes, especially for ensembles that meet really frequently, I don't think it's really necessary to practice all of that music uh, in your practice session. Like, 
If you're playing, you know, uh, something really slow and beautiful in wind band and you rehearse three times a week for an hour and a half, I don't know if you need to practice those whole notes in your practice session. Yeah. I think that could probably be left to that rehearsal time. Well, here's the thing with rehearsals and ensemble music practice is that really, if you're a serious musician, and even if you're not, you, you could act like one. Um, <laughs> wow, that sounded really harsh. No, but uh, it's showing up to the first rehearsal with all the notes because rehearsal time shouldn't be spent on learning notes. It should be spent on music. And that's a real big peeve of mine is spending rehearsal time in large ensembles working with people who just are still struggling with fingerings and notes. So as a responsible student, you should practice your ensemble music prior to the first rehearsal. And then there you're, you're done. You're good. You set the example for the rest of the group as to this is what preparation looks like. And then you can spend your practice time on other things. There you go. Learn it early. Be done with it. Um, and now there are things that you may have to keep working on that take technical stuff. Like, I'm sure all those woodwindy people are not going to be able to get, like, all those runs and crazy mess that they have under their fingers. Maybe by the first rehearsal, especially if you get it, like, in a day. But it, there's nothing preventing them from having it in, like, a week or so. But then, like you said, after that, then they're free to practice anything else. And it's just about ensemble stuff after that point. Right. Yeah, that's true. I could we could be looking at it from especially a horn perspective where the the tricky things are often due to range, not necessarily technical passages or yeah. soloistic stuff. But yeah. you're right. There there are certain instruments that um have really high demands in both man and orchestral repertoire that are purely even just like finger patterns and technical and um I'm just glad I don't play violin. Oh, yeah. And, you know, I mean, those poor contra bassoons and contra bass clarinets, man, their parts are demanding. You mean their single whole note fart tone? <laughs> oh, sorry. I just had to get out my contra bassoon and play a note for a minute. Wow. Uh, that sounds anyway, pretty good. Thanks. Uh, and the other thing I was thinking about with ensembles and balancing them is the power of no. <laughs> because oh, I think that's yes. a really big power that I think... Especially, I'm speaking to undergraduate collegiate students right now a lot, but that's because that's what we work with the most. Um, but the ability to say no to things, um, you know, if you're asked to play in a thousand different chamber ensembles, or if you're asked to play in all of the bands, both your lower band and your upper band and your orchestra and the special chamber orchestra and the no, like, I can't do it. I have no time to practice. That is an okay and a wonderful skill to develop. Yeah. Um, the other side of that, however, is if you're in a program where you maybe don't have even enough personnel to fill both ensembles, and that's where it can get kind of tricky. It can. So then it's your job to figure out, to work kind of on that balance and figure out times where, Maybe you're practicing more on non-ensemble days. But even so, it's still, regardless of the situation, it's important to think about planning and balancing. Um, but, right, certain, especially, you know, say people are putting together ensembles for their recital or you're asked to do just a random church gig or this and that and the other thing. And as much as it's good to say yes earlier in your career, uh, especially because that can lead to other opportunities, uh, having a little bit of common sense and taking a step back and saying, okay, do I really need this time? How much is my time worth? It, it's good to evaluate at least. Yeah, you got to watch out for yourself too. Um, and I have life hacks and tips about practicing in just a moment. Anyway, uh, my next category about balancing is about classes. Like students have time, have a hard time balancing not only their musical life, but like their other gen ed classes. And so I have a, a couple Which they thoughts usually really love to do. Ugh, right. I know I love sitting in my lecture class of 500 for general drama appreciation. Anyway, um, <laughs> I, uh, I, I just have some thoughts on that. Again, you may disagree with me, and that's fine, because this worked for me, and it could not work for you. And if you're a type A personality and really meticulous, you know, like a librarian or a clarinet player, then you can do whatever you want to. But uh, what I think is when it comes to things like general education courses, 
Uh, my advice to my students is to do what you need for those classes, but don't do any more. <laughs> like your teacher says in your, again, 500 people psych class, you need to read chapters one through three, and that's page one to 78 in the book by, you know, in two days. Do you really need to do that? And if you know all of your test questions come from the PowerPoint shown in class, I think the obvious answer is you should just look at your PowerPoint. But that's just me. I mean, obviously, I think these classes are to make one well-rounded in the same way that taking multiple music classes makes you a complete musician. However, oh, yeah. it's more an appreciation of the subjects. And hopefully you're taking classes that you have at least a shred of interest in. But yeah, it's it, being smart about your time. You're right. Um, and for those music classes, uh, th maybe a different way of thinking instead of like for something like music history, which is a really difficult class we all know when we came through. It was just a ton of studying we had to do um, and so much content to take in. Maybe looking at it in a different way as opposed to thinking, oh my gosh, I have to learn all of these recordings from the Norton Anthology that will be on my test on Friday. Ooh, and you have to memorize all these dates and all of the um, genres and etc. Um, instead of looking at it as like, oh my gosh, I have to learn this stuff. It's how can you see the benefit of it that can help diversify and market yourself? Like, how can you use that in your own instrument study um, to to improve your musical knowledge? That changes it over from, like, what a pain to, hey, this is really interesting and just, again, makes me a more well-rounded musician, like you were saying. I think that um, that kind of helps balance it out as, okay, this is something that's worthwhile as opposed to this is such a pain in the butt. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, okay. We're going to take a short break and hear from one of our unofficial sponsors. Uh, so we'll be back in a minute. Are you ready for a fast food experience that'll make you feel like a hero? Can you handle dining that makes you a champion? Are you strong enough to start eating on a pedal E flat? Well, this is for you. Come to Ein Heldenberger and... Cal Polk, I own Nebraska, my Omaha. It's the only German named restaurant that only serves great food. I'm Hildenberger. Where your dining journey makes you a hero. I want a patty mill. You're getting a hero. What's a gyro? It's Greek. I want that here. You think it's German, but no. It's Greekish. Just like Ein Heldenleben tells the story of a boy and maybe a goat who fight the evil powers of Beowulf to threaten to at least the demons a little red riding hood upon Xanadu, and then they get cake, and I really, really like cake, and then my lift got stuck at a gate, and then it was late, and I was late to find a mate. Oops, where was I? I mean, the goat suddenly died, and the boy was a hero, but not like a hero, but a hero, which is a sandwich. I mean, you get it already. Okay, thanks. Come to Ein Heldenberger. Feel, Feel like, like a gyro. gyro. And Helton Burger is not a real thing because no one would waste the time saying the entire name to go to the restaurant and is not affiliated with anyone or anything ever and is not actually exist and is not an official sponsor of the Complete Musician Podcast. And we're back talking more about balancing. So another thing I want to talk about balancing is, is balancing your life <laughs> because hopefully you have a life. Is that possible? Um, as a music major, it's always said that you don't have a life, but I think we both had lives. Um, I occasionally did fun things when I was in school. Mm. Yeah, uh -oh. you know when you didn't have to study your um chordal analysis or you know do a practicum or write an english paper that you have no interest in whatsoever yeah or there's, didn't read there's the definitely book. time well yeah per your um, advice uh thank you cliff notes <laughs> anyway uh we are not sponsored by cliff notes anyway so uh in life you have to i think it, it, you have to balance life with all this stuff and i think students have a hard time finding that and that's what really really stresses them out is that they don't give time for life um they don't give time to uh the relationships that they should be forming the friendships and the networking that goes on in school and they also don't take time to enjoy themselves as much as they possibly could because of the way that they balance everything else. So I think it's important that students realize that they do take time. They need to take time for themselves. Um, and it's important to take maybe at least one day off of the week, uh, maybe in the weekend, since there's no school going on on the weekend. 
uh, during that academic year, but maybe one day in the weekend for themselves. I know that that's really tough for kids in like marching band because, you know, Saturdays can be game days or like if they're traveling, that can be really tough. But maybe like that Sunday, just taking a couple hours to relax and chill so that they maybe not work on anything so that they can just take a rest day. Right. And I, I think just looking <laughs> back, at least from my perspective, looking back, especially on undergrad, um, it was a great time. And, you know, especially in a situation with a, like a college town, a quintessential college town, there's so much to do. And oh, yeah. I wish I would have done more. You know, Me maybe I, I didn't go to as many events or just explore as much. But looking back, that is a regret. I mean, I did do a fair share. And, you know, you meet a lot of good people. And, um, But, yeah, taking time for yourself is very important. You can't be hitting the books all the time. You can't. It just it makes you a more irritable person, which transforms you into a jerk. And our number one rule in life and being a musician is don't, don't be, be a, a jerk. jerk. Exactly. Be a good person <laughs> because everyone will want to work with you. Anyway, so those are just kind of some categories that I feel like students have trouble balancing in, like their practice time, their ensemble time, their regular classes, and then just life in general. So I kind of came up with some life hacks or like some tips for maybe some of those things that could or could they could attribute to their life now that could make it a little bit easier. Um one of those things is some of my students do this already, especially when it comes to practice time, is they schedule out their practices really meticulously. Um, again, we're operating on that maybe two hour average over the week per day. Um, you may not get to practice for as long on one day, but it helps to kind of think about how much you're splitting up your time. Um, so like you're going to warm up for this long. Uh, you're going to do technical practice for this long. You're going to do literature practice for this long. Um, I saw an app once or read some article, I think it was on the Bulletproof Musician, that said that you should set a timer for all of these things, and then it helps you stay really focused because you know you have a limited time. I've tried that before, and it really has helped. Um, but that's an idea to kind of help you stay focused or at least not spend too much time belaboring things in your individual practice. Sounds like a great idea. Anyway, that's just a, a something that could really help. I have students who do that and they really enjoy it. Um, the other thing I think is, uh, again, um, this is the opinion of Drew Phillips. So when it comes to ensemble time, I think we've already talked about how, you know, you don't need to practice all your whole notes in ensemble time, but you can also use that as little practice sessions, right? Like long notes and pieces are kind of like long tones. And to, when you're doing unison playing, like that's intonation practice. And when you have slurs in music, that's like practicing slurring in your warm up. Right. And then tongued notes are like articulation practice. And there's no reason why you can't use those moments as efficient practice and technical practice to get better. And of course, every time that you play, you should want to play your best. And so when you're in ensembles, constantly reminding yourself of the things that you talk about in lessons, um, how to, you know, like you said, how to do this slur well or how to, oh, yeah, I got to use my air on this note and I got to use... You know, think about this vowel on this note. I mean, I, that's kind of the way that I did a lot of undergrad was I clocked my hours, but I did it kind of cumulatively between practice room and ensembles. Um, and for me, I just I was going through some chop issues, too. So fatigue, like my my hours were limited until I figured it out. So sometimes students, you you got to you know, be safe too. And you got to be smart. And I do, I don't know if you're going to get into this, but I do want to just quick say, never play to the point of pain. If you ever feel like something is weird, just put the horn down. I'm getting to that. Okay, yeah. good. Or I'm getting to something like that. Yeah. Um, and going back to the ensemble thing, uh, it transforms that when you think about kind of practicing while you're playing in ensembles, it transforms it from something like, Oh, I have to sit here and do this to, oh, this is really mind for practice. So my advice in that is to just not play mindlessly. Again, like you said, we're trying to play our best in all situations. So if you're trying to get better as you're playing with this group, man, you're going to suddenly be practicing a lot more than you thought you would. Right. Um, 
And then just like you said, uh, is that going into this, knowing when to just pack up and go home <laughs> um, is Very a important. really important thing. Like there is no point in practicing when you're frustrated. Uh, things can irritate you that things are getting better at the speed that you like, but that doesn't mean that you pick up your horn and throw it against the wall or you uh, you know, throw your pencils and kick your stand over. Um, there's no point. And once you're angry, it's not going to get any better and you should just pack up and stop playing. I wish I could have told that to my younger self when dealing with lip trills. Because I'm so, still working on those suckers. Uh, I can just think of so much anger that I wish I could have just let go and done an Adina Menzel. But I didn't. And <laughs> oh, I just became so... Thanks. I just became so frustrated and angry. I should have packed up and gone home. And in addition to this, I think we should remind everyone that it is okay every once in a while to take a day off of the horn. Right. And we talked a little bit about this back in our kind of summer chops episode with how to take time off and when it's smart to take time off. And... Yeah, I agree, especially if you had a busy week, if you had a recital, a big concert, take some time off. I'm totally in agreement, and I think most teachers out there are passionate enough people and nice enough people, most of us, um, when we've had our coffee for the day, um, that <laughs> or three. if you come in and you say, and then they're in your lesson, they say, how is practicing this week? And you say, look, I've had, you know, I had a really long playing day yesterday. I just, last night I did not practice or for the last couple of nights I did not practice because I was tired and I just need to stop. We will understand because we've had those days too. Right, and that's assuming that as a student you've consistently put in the time and shown that you are a good practicer, and it's not just an excuse. That just Absolutely. oh, I just I had a I had a busy day, but you couldn't play out of a cardboard box. That's a different thing, but totally different. If you're a good student, we completely understand. We will. Um, so that's all I wanted to really talk about is all of those things. Being efficient with your time, maybe some of those life hacks or tips would help some people. Um, but it is my main point is that it's really important that students balance their their uh, their practice time, their ensemble time, their regular classes, and making sure that they still have a life in this really crazy music career. Right. And as I was telling one of my students today about practicing, look, you're here for this. What is your major? music right this is your time and and me as a teacher i will do everything i can to make you better but you're the one that has to put in the time you're the one that's going to get better by taking the initiative and taking your education into your own hands so that's a really important thing as a student to be as uh, doug hills called a responsible student so that's all we've got for you this week uh thanks for listening to us if you want to email uh, us and send all your angry controversial letters to me um, again please title them angry letters for Drew and send them to coremotohorn at gmail.com make sure you subscribe to us on YouTube and iTunes and leave us a comment uh, with all of your news and gossip and all of the ways that I rid my basement of camel crickets because they're everywhere and remember as we learned from Frankie Goes to Hollywood Relax. Mm-hmm.